Hello everyone, myself Dr. Pratik Gar. So today we will discuss about known separative otitis media. So what do you mean by otitis media? It is an inflammatory condition of the middle ear. What do you mean by known separative? That is absence of pus. So any inflammation of the middle ear without pus is known as known separative otitis media. So let's discuss one question. In the given condition, which one of the following statement is true? Now look at the diagram. This is a diagram where we can see the tympanic membrane. This is my complete tympanic membrane. Okay. And we can see some bubble like shadow. I'll demarcate some of these. These are some bubble like shadow. You all can appreciate very well in this diagram. I hope you can see all these. So there are multiple bubbles in the uh, diagram. So by looking at the picture, I can easily say this is in diagnosis of SOM. That is serous otitis media. Or we can say non-separative otitis media. Now look at the look out at the options. The option number one is sensory neural deafness occurs as a complication in 80% of the cases. Now the firstly, serous otitis media is a condition of the middle ear. So in the middle ear pathology, the most common hearing loss is the conductive hearing loss. So definitely in serous otitis media, there is no sensory neural hearing loss. It is only conductive hearing loss. Okay, so this option seems to be wrong. Option number B, intracranial spread of the infection complicates the clinical courses. Firstly, in serous otitis media, there is no infection because it is an otitis media with only fluid collection into the medullary cavity, but there is no bacterial invasion. So there will be no infection and there will be no intracranial spread. Okay, so option number B also seems to be wrong. Option number C, tympanostomy tubes are usually required for the treatment. It seems to be very much correct option because serous otitis media with diffusion or we can say uh, serous otitis media, tympanostomy tubes are generally preferred as a modality of the treatment so that the fluid collection into the middle ear can be drained out into the external auditory canal. Option number B, uh, D, gram negative organism are grown routinely in the culture in the aspirate. Now this seems to be again wrong because firstly there will be no pathogenic organism in SOM. And suppose if we talk about the chronic otitis media or the acute otitis media, the most common organism involved is gram positive. How gram positive? Because the most common organism causing uh, chronic otitis media is pneumococcus. That is streptococcus pneumoniae, which is a gram positive organism. So in chronic otitis media, the most common organism are gram positive, not gram negative. So this option again stands wrong. Now. Uh, what are the synonyms of the non separative otitis media? It is also known as secretory otitis media, serous otitis media, blue ear. Why the blue ear? Because sometimes the fluid becomes very thick and like a glue. And other name is otitis media with effusion. So what is the definition? Accumulation of the non-inflammatory exudate in the middle ear cavity. Here in this diagram, we can see, suppose this is my middle ear cavity, which is connected with the eustachian tube. Any pathology leading to the blockage of the eustachian tube will leads to accumulation of middle ear mucosal secretion. So all the middle ear will be now filled with the secretions and sometimes this secretion mucosal will become thick presenting to a condition known as serous otitis media. Now what is the etiology? Multiple etiology in the babies or children, the most common pathology for serous otitis media is enlarged adenoids or the enlarged tonsils. What are the other pathology? Any benign or malignant tumor involving the nasopharynx because in the nasopharynx, your eustachian tube opens up. So any pathology, any tumor will block the eustachian tube and leading to the retention of secretions into middle ear. What are the other causes? Nasal cause, we can talk about chronic rhinosinusitis. 
tonsillitis or any palatal defect, congenital defect like the cleft palate, cleft lip, any palatal palsy will also lead to the serous otitis media because of dysfunctioning or hampering the eustachian tube function. Any allergy like the mucosal edema of the eustachian tube orifice will also lead to the uh, serous otitis media. Now, what are the symptoms? Uh, SOM generally will be painless or very mild pain. Mostly the patient will complain of heaviness into the ear with a little bit decreased hearing. Sometimes patient may say that he is feeling a little bit of pain also. And mostly in the children, this hearing loss plus heaviness sensation will also be associated with the chronic rhinitis like the sneezing, nasal blockage, etc or the mouth breathing because these children most commonly having the enlarged adenoids leading to SOM plus nasal blockage or we can say mouth breathing. What is the hearing loss involved? That is the conductive hearing loss and we all know the causes because SOM is a condition or the pathology of middle ear and middle ear pathology generally leads to conductive hearing loss. The sensory neural pathologies we have to understand what is a sensory organ of the ear. Sensory organ is the outer hair cell or organ of corti, more correct. Okay, so organ of corti that lies in the cochlea, which is a part of the inner ear. What do you mean by neural? Neurals means pathologies involving about uh, involving the auditory nerves, like a caustic neuroma, any sort of schwannoma, any facial nerve tumor also, because it causes compression over the auditory tube, auditory. Uh, now, so sensory neural, the pathology should be either in the cochlea or in the nerves, whereas the serous otitis media is only middle ear pathology leading to conductive hearing loss. And if children is having prolonged SOM, so there will be delayed speech because if the baby can't hear, the speech center will not develop properly. So that is a cause for the delayed speech in the children. And the, again, another symptom is autophony. That means patient will hear his own sound a little bit louder. Now, how it happens? We all know that conductive, there will be noise in the environment. That means some ambient sound are always present in the environment, which are generally heard by the ear. And suppose patient is having conductive hearing loss. So what will happen? The ambient noise, or we can say the noise, because of conductive hearing loss will not be appreciable by the patient. But if patient speak himself, so there will be bone conduction also as air conduction is hampered because of SRAM. So because of the bone conduction working properly, patient will hear his own sound bit louder because the noise got cancelled because of the loss or decreased air conduction. I hope you got this point. And Patient, will, I told you, will also have a nasal discharge or the nasal obstruction. Now, let's talk about the signs. The first sign will be, if we look at the tympanic membrane, it will be dull. What do you mean by dull? There will be no light reflex. Normally, in a tympanic membrane, we all know, suppose this is my malleus and this is the umbo. So, there is always a light. Okay? There will be a light reflex, which is projected generally anterior inferiorly. So, first sign will be absence of this light. Okay? So, the tympanic membrane will be dull, lustreless. Sometimes it may have the retracted tympanic membrane, that is, tympanic membrane is medialized. And we can see the presence of fluid also. As in the picture asked in the question, we can see the bubbles were there and some fluid level was also present, which we can appreciate in some of the patients and decrease mobility of the tympanic membrane because beneath the tympanic membrane there is a fluid so it can't move properly. Now what are the treatment? Initially we should start with the anti-allergic steroidal spray or decongestion. Decongestion like pseudoephedrine, okay, phenylephrine is there. So there are certain nasal decongestion drop. Nowadays they are marketed also like otrivine nasal drop, xylomist nasal drop. So you should have a trial for the decongestant, anti-allergic and steroidal sprays. In babies, most commonly steroid spray we prefer is the momenta zone. Whereas in adults, the fluticasone spray is preferred, okay. 
So we will try this decongestant and other medical treatment for three months. If no benefit is there, then we should go for grommet. We should do the meningotomy. That means to make a hole into the tympanic membrane and insert a grommet. You can see in the diagram what we are doing. We will give. We have given a radial incision. I'll mark it with the blue. So we will give a radial incision. Why to give a radial incision? I'll tell you. In serous otitis media, our purpose is just to insert a grommet. And it should be held by the tympanic membrane. So, how tympanic membrane will hold it? The fibers of tympanic membrane. I talk about the periphery of the tympanic membrane are in radial direction like this. Okay. So, suppose if I cut down my fibers like this, so it will definitely make a hole. But since the fibers are cut along the length, so they will be Uh, not sufficient to hold the grommet, and if I put my incision like this, that is along the direction of the fibers. So what will happen? The uh, uh, con uh, con uh, conjoined two fibers, like on both the sides, there are radial fibers also. So if I incise like this, and I'll put a grommet into this. So the uh, the conjoint or the, the nearby fibers will hold this grommet. So in serous otitis media, we should always put a radial incision along the anterior inferior quadrant that is nearby to the eustachian tube opening. Okay, because most of the fluid it uh, accumulate at this level because of the eustachian tube dysfunction. So we'll put the grommet. We can see in the diagram. This is a grommet which is being inserted here, and we should leave this grommet at least for four to five months, or we can say six months. How it will help? So all the secretion can be drained out through the grommet into the external ear. Okay. So that's how it helps. So now you got it. Uh, this again was very important for the examination purpose. That is a radial incision should be given, and anterior quadrant is the quadrant preferred for grommet incision. Now I'll, I'll ask you another question. In acute otitis media, suppose there is a pus collection into the middle ear, and we want to drain it out. So where should my incision be? In that case, I am talking about acute otitis media. Suppose this is my tympanic membrane, and this is my stapes and inca shadow. This is my malleus. So, if I divide in the four quadrants like this, okay. So this quadrant is my posterior superior quadrant, and this quadrant, this lower one, this is my posterior. inferior quadrant now first thing we need to understand is we should never ever put a incision into the posterior superior quadrant never the reason being my stapes bone facial nerve incus bone all the critical structures are at posterior superior quadrant so we will never put an incision at this quadrant now mostly we will put our incision in the both lower quadrants that is the posterior inferior quadrant and anterior inferior quadrant so so in anterior inferior quadrant we have discussed this is for som serious otitis media okay whereas in acute otitis media that is this acute otitis media we should put our incision in posterior inferior quadrant because the collection of the pus should not be there at the level of the round window we all know the round window will be here we all know the round window will be somewhere here okay so if we put a incision like this that is circumferential incision should be kept in the acute otitis media con uh, condition so that the fibers uh, the incision will stay for longer and it should be in the posterior inferior quadrant so that any pus collection will not enter into the round window niche and it will just come out okay i hope you understand 
Now, again a question, the last question, the following are used in acute separative otitis media, chronic separative otitis media, serious otitis media or all the above. Now, this is a condition, you can see the grommet, grommet is only and only used in serious otitis media. We will never put in grommet in the acute separated otitis media. Reason is because tempering grommet is already inflamed. If we try to put some grommet, so there will be large perforation. So, of no use. Okay. So, the correct answer is option numbers.